Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Congressman, for being here. Thanks to your service for our country. Uh, we appreciate all that you've done to protect us, to keep us safe. I uh, agree with uh, what one of my colleagues, Senator Alexander, said a minute ago, that public lands issues very often are different. Uh, when you ask people from different states, the reaction they might have might differ depending on what part of the country they come from. Uh, those who are from east of the Mississippi are likely to feel a little bit differently than those west of the Mississippi. And there's a reason for this. There are a lot of reasons, but one in particular has to do with the fact that uh, of this land that the federal government owns, you know, we're talking roughly 30 percent of the land mass in the United States, the overwhelming majority of the federal land is in the western United States. It affects many in the western United States in a very real, very personal way, and very often it's uh, the poor and middle class who bear the greatest burden associated with mismanagement and overreach uh, when it comes to our federal land. For this reason, uh, the seemingly limitless power granted to the President of the United States under the Antiquities Act um, is particularly troubling to some of us. With the stroke of his executive pen, the President of the United States can upend communities can change traditional ways of life, change even uh, uh, religious practices, and lock up hundreds of thousands of acres of land uh, with one action, in some cases uh, over a million acres. So to begin, I want to ask you the same question I asked uh, uh, the person who will be your predecessor if you're confirmed, uh, uh, Sally Jewell, currently serving as Secretary of the Interior. Do you view local support? as a necessary precondition, a, a condition precedent, we might say, to the, con the, the creation of a national monument under the Antiquities Act? I view it's absolutely critical to have state and local support on a monument that they, are, they participate in. Uh, in the case of, of Salt Lake or, or Utah, is that I'm concerned about the schools, uh, and the funding mechanism that the schools are, that's been largely taken away, as I understand. So that's a concern. Uh, but if you, if you start at the local community level, at the grassroots, uh, and you build, and there's participation, then we get ahead of the problem. Uh, as a military, a former military officer, you plan. And planning uh, prevents a lot of, of miscues and execution. And part of the planning process is go out, get community support, uh, make sure your, your governor and, 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 and your, your elected leaders are, are behind you, and then petition, talk to the, the president who make, makes the decision, and everyone should be on the same page, or at least about on the same page. I, I appreciate that, and I, I, I hope, Congressman, that if you're confirmed to this position, that one of the th first things you'll do is come to Utah, and I'd encourage you to talk to some of the people who have been affected by the monument designation by the President on December 28th when he designated 1.35 million acres in southeast Utah in San Juan County, our, our state's poorest county, against the overwhelming opposition of the local population of San Juan County, against the opposition of uh, all six members of our state's congressional delegation uh, against uh, the opposition of our governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, uh, all of our statewide elected officials within the state of Utah. And I, I think what you're going to hear from them is, please, Mr. Secretary, do something about this. So, uh, uh, Congressman, if you're confirmed, will you consider visiting Utah, talking to the people affected by this monument designation? And based on what you hear from the affected population, uh, consider having a conversation with President Trump about revisiting this unfortunate step. Thank you for the question. I'm, I'm absolutely committed to restoring trust. Uh, and if confirmed, I've committed to go out to Utah uh, first and talk to the governor, talk to the people on the ground, and come back and make a recommendation to the president uh, on, on that. I, I think that's important. Thank you. I'm going to be a very busy guy. I'm going to go out to Wa the state of Washington. I'm going to go out to Alaska. I don't think I've, I think I've committed to go to everywhere. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm going to be remote. This is going to be a deployment. I apologize to my wife in advance, but I'll be, I'll be gone a lot. Thank you, and thank you for willingness to do that. I've got seconds left, uh, so I will have to forego the rest of my questions. But I do want to say in closing, 
Um, I appreciate you visiting with me about this. I want to point out that um, there is nothing in the Antiquities Act that prohibits uh, revisiting. Um, and I also want to point out there is a distinction between talking about um, who should own and manage public land, those close to it or those thousands of miles away from it, and on the other hand, suggesting that uh, ExxonMobil should set up a drilling rig uh, underneath Delicate Arch. Uh, that is a straw man argument and, and not one that anyone that I know of uh, raising this issue wants to advance. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Stabenow. Uh, 